Hey, greetings, everyone. It's Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, and I'm joined with uh, my wife, Angela, here in our home in Dallas. And we just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to spend 30 minutes with us. First and foremost, Angela and I would like to say happy Independence Day to each and every one of you. And the first thing you need to understand is that the 4th of July is a date on anyone's calendar. I'm sure it's a date on the calendar anywhere in England or uh, any of the many countries around the world. But tomorrow is going to be our Independence Day. And I think that it is so important that you share the meaning of our Independence Day with your loved ones, with your family. And so what Angela and I would like to do, I'm probably going to do most of it, is to talk to you about why tomorrow, our Independence Day, is so important and what it should mean. And I would ask that you would share what we're about to share with you, with your families, with your friends, all tomorrow on our Independence Day, the 242nd birthday of the greatest nation that the world has ever known, these United States of America. In Congress, July the 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that, requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are most deposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a, dis a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right. It is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of a absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has refused his assent to laws the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained. And when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such disillusions to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise. 
the state reminding in the, remaining in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without and convulsions within. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose obstructing laws for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither and raising the conditions of appropriations of lands. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and the amount and payment of their salaries. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us in times of peace standing armies without the consent of our legislatures. He has affected to render the military independent and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation, for quartering large bodies of armed troops among us, for protecting them by a mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us in many cases of the benefit of trial by jury, for transporting us beyond the seas to be tried for pretended offenses, for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies for taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws and altering fundamentally the forms of our governments, for suspending our own legislatures and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns and destroyed the lives of our people. He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy scarcely parallel in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against their country, to become the executioners of their friends and brethren, or to follow themselves by their hands. He has excited domestic insurrections amongst us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, who know, whose known rule of warfare is an indistinguished, undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our British brother. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and consanguinity. We must therefore acquiesce in the, in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war and peace friends. We therefore the representatives of the United States of America in general Congress assembled appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions 
do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce and to do all things, all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. From the state of New Hampshire, Joshua Bartlett, William Whipple, Matthew Thornton. From the state of Massachusetts, John Hancock, Samuel Adams, John Adams, Robert Tree Payne, Elbridge Gary. From the state of Rhode Island, Stephen Hopkins, William Ellery. From the state of Connecticut, Roger Sherman, Samuel Huntington, William Williams, Oliver Walcott. From the state of New York, William Floyd, Philip Livingston, Francis Lewis, Lewis Morris. From the state of New Jersey, Richard Stockton, John Witherspoon, Francis Hopkinson, John Hart, Abraham Clark. From the state of Pennsylvania, Benjamin Rush, Robert Morris, Benjamin Franklin, John Morton, George Clymer, James Smith, George Taylor, James Wilson, George Ross. From the state of Delaware, Caesar Rodney, George Reed, Thomas McKean. From the state of Maryland, Samuel Chase, William Packer, Thomas Stone, Charles Carroll of Carrollton. From the state of Virginia, George White, Richard Henry Lee, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Harrison, Thomas Nelson Jr., Francis Lightfoot Lee, Carter Braxton. From the state of North Carolina, William Hooper, Joseph Hughes, John Penn. From the state of South Carolina, Edward Rutledge, Thomas Hayward Jr., Thomas Lynch Jr., Arthur Middleton. From my home state of Georgia, where I was born and raised, Button Gwinnett, Lyman Hall, and George Walton. Those men who signed that declaration signed a death warrant. Those men who signed that declaration 242 years ago made it possible for Angela and I, and for each and every one of us to live in the greatest nation that the world has ever known. Tomorrow is not just the 4th of July. Tomorrow is not about barbecues, but tomorrow is about remembering what they did. Tomorrow is about reading those words that solidify us as a free people. And always remember this very simple premise, that a free people are not equal and an equal people are not free. And as we look at some of the movements and some of the insurrections that are happening, some of the people that don't believe that we should have a sovereign nation with borders to protect, some of the people that believe that any and everyone has an inherent right to earn that great title of being called an American, it's something that we've been blessed to have, those of us that have been born here, and those of us like Angela, who came here from Jamaica and was naturalized as a United States citizen. We take it as a sense of honor and pride tomorrow, our Independence Day, and we ask that you do the same. Anson, what does America mean to you? A land of freedom and opportunity, a land uh, where there are laws that um, are kept on the books, usually, uh, lately, I don't know. Um, but it is the greatest country on this earth. And um, having lived in a few countries, I know this to be true. 13 different countries, three different combat zones for myself. Angela's dad served over 22 years active duty service in the United States Army. He's a man that came from Jamaica, fell in love with this country to the point that he was willing to lay down his life for this country. He served tours in Vietnam. and He is buried with honor in Arlington National Cemetery. That's what America is all about. America is all about not respecting where you're born, not thinking about where you came from, 
But just knowing what 242 years ago these men did, these immortal words that I just read to each and every one of you, and that I challenge that you read to your families. Aubrey, our oldest daughter, is watching from West Virginia. Our youngest daughter is out messing around someplace. <laughs> we don't know what she's doing. She got a hold of my truck. She's out with some friends that she had here in Dallas. But don't worry. She will hear these words, and she will know what it means to be she's an American. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the time now to answer some of the questions that you have there scrolling down. And we've got about 14 minutes before we let you go. But please remember also that this is such a great nation. And if you do have the time, pull up the letter that John Adams wrote on the July the 3rd of 1776. And speaking of which, here is our youngest daughter who just came in. And as you can see, she has been out and she's got somewhat tan. So we're going to share these Sunburn. words with her as well. But the thing is this, on July the 3rd of 1776, John Adams wrote a letter to his wife, Abigail Adams. Abigail Adams, who along with another incredible woman, was the first lady and also later became a first mother. That's how important Abigail Adams was in this fight and this call called liberty and freedom. So let's see what you have to say. Uh, thank you, sir, for wisdom and patriotism. Cheryl, just thank you for taking the time to be here with us. Chuck Cook says, have a great Independence Day, Colonel. Independence Day, Colonel, what's a Semper Fi? God bless you, Semper Fi. And as you know, the motto of the United States Army is this will defend. Before there was a country, on June the 14th of 1775, there was an army. And that army, that Navy later, and then that Marine Corps, November the 10th of 1775, we stood to protect the ideas of liberty, freedom, and democracy. We stood to protect the ideas that Thomas Jefferson would write about 242 years ago before he even began to write it, because you had to have people that would defend this idea that we call the United States of America. Uh, let's see. Angie Williams, Jamie Livingston, thank you for your service to the country. And thanks to all of the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen that are out there all over the world right now standing on freedom's ramparts, making sure that this great nation, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all, we are the land of the free because we continue to produce the brave. And so thanks to all of those men and women out there that are making it possible for us to enjoy our 242nd Independence Day. Uh, Andrew Rupp, nice to meet you, sir, this past weekend in Tombstone. I had a great time in Tombstone. And uh, for you folks out there in Tombstone, Arizona, We'll be back right after Christmas, and we're going to spend about uh, three, four days out there, do some riding around on horses and uh, ATVs, and just enjoy that great all-American town, Second Amendment city. That's what Tombstone, Arizona is. John Coleman, hi, daughter. Okay. Uh, Denise, I can't pronounce this name, Jasinowski. I have three girls. They're out messing around, too, one in Minnesota, one in Dallas, one in Raleigh, North Carolina. Well, you call them up and tell them that this is a great nation and share with them the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Michelle Shai Bledsoe, would you consider running for president? This is the person you got to talk to about running for president. Uh, Jack Berry, will the spraying of chemicals stop soon? Chemtrails. Uh, I don't know what you're referring to. Uh, Aubrey, yes, your, your sister is Sunbird. Hello, Aubrey. We love you, and our oldest daughter, Aubrey, has finished her first year of physician assistant school there in West Virginia. That's the didactic academic year, and she is in her second week of her clinical rotations. She has eight total clinical rotations, and again, just think about how great that is. See, that's why I hate it when people try to politicize a word like dreamers. Every single American child is a dreamer, and our oldest daughter is living her dream. A year from now, she'll be a physician assistant. We're proud of her. And this little rascal back here, well, clock's ticking. She's got one year, and uh, we'll see what happens. But she goes into her senior year of college at Florida International University. Um, Laura McDowell, thank you, sir. It was a pleasure to serve under you. Happy Fourth. Laura is not Happy Fourth. It's Happy Independence Day. God bless you. Uh, Cookie Sheehan, thank you for fighting for us. Happy Fourth. Cookie, again, Happy Independence Day, not Happy Fourth. 
and I will always fight for this great nation because I took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, to bear true faith and allegiance to the same. You know what? I'm going to give Austin an opportunity to uh, share with you all. You know, she's one of those millennials. You know, let's see, you know, what she feels about these great United States of America in 242 years of independence. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Austin West. Um, how I feel about America is one of the best places to be. You're free. You have freedom of speech. You have your own opinions. You have everybody else's opinions. But um, most importantly, we have um, the country and the, the nation, nation that's been here, been around for a long time. Um, but most importantly, um, look at the camera. Happy Independence Day to um, everybody who follows my dad. Thank you for your support. We love and care for all of you so much. Um, and maybe one day my dad will be a president, but oh, I don't okay. think soon, but maybe someday. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, David Kuda, Jr., uh, thank you for your service. There's another Army grunt who May I say God bless you and God bless you back, David, and a happy Independence Day. Uh, Ronnie Widener, you make us proud, my good friend, and American. Thank you. As you want to read some of the comments and respond? Yeah, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> I, I, I got you. Um, Jennifer Johnson, God bless you, sir, your family, and all patriots that do what needs to be done to keep this country free. Where we go, one, we will all go. That was a really good comment. Uh, Diane Henderson, Angela, you can't see it, but she says that you would make a beautiful first lady. She well, would probably, she's blind without her glasses, but, you know, yeah, she would probably make a beautiful first lady, so we'll see. Karen Bega, my son is just starting his PA rotations this week. Congratulations, Karen, to your son. Uh, yes, our daughter, so Aubrey, her first PA rotation these first five weeks is in family medicine, and like I said, it has eight total to go. Nikki Fuller, Jim Marchant says hello and go Gators. Hello. You know, everywhere you go, as a Tennessee volunteer, <laughs> you run into Florida Gators. So, you know, we'll see what happens this college football season. We both got new coaches. So God bless you, and uh, God bless the Florida Gators until they play the University of Tennessee. Uh, you and your family can be a presidential family. Bobby Doringer, uh, for a long time, I've admired you. Your family looks adorable. Yeah, they adopted me. Uh, Donna DeLong, happy Independence Day to you and your beautiful family. Thank you so much, Donna. Uh, let's see, Linda Kaiser, uh, thank you for your comments. And I don't know about being a smart man, but I appreciate you putting that down there because Angela has a PhD, and sometimes she uses really big words to confuse me. Um, Bob Rivera, we oh, met Jill. a few years ago. Look, Jill. Hey, Jill Whitty, happy Independence Day. Jill, thank you so much. Uh, what a nice kid. <laughs> you don't know the full story, Steve. That's okay. Uh, Keith Gillen, this, the shirt is screaming happy 4th of July. No, Keith, the shirt is screaming happy Independence Day. How many times do I have to tell you people it's not happy 4th of July? That's a date on the calendar. It's happy Independence Day. Your dad is a great man, smart girl. Thank you. Okay, what else we got? Uh, Steve Barron says smart girl. Yeah, she is, you know. And, and this is what I try to teach my, my daughters, you know, about character. Character means doing what is right when no one's watching. And I think it's so important that, you know, we as parents, we, we don't try to be the friends to our kids. We got to be benevolent dictators sometimes. And we got to get them to understand and raise them up with the right principles and values. Because remember what it says in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way that they should go so that when they grow old, they shall not depart from it. And that's why I can sit here because I had two great parents. Buck and Snooks West, both buried in Marietta National Cemetery. My father was a corporal in World War II. My mother did 25 years plus uh, service with the United States Marine Corps headquarters there. And I already told you about Angela's uh, dad, who was buried in Arlington National Cemetery, her mom that uh, we just visited with. She's at a senior assistant living center right here in Dallas, 80 years old. And she's still feisty, but that's the Jamaica <laughs> way. Okay, uh, Joan Kurosaka. Happy Independence Day to a beautiful family. My husband is retired Air Force. And, Joan, thank you for serving right there alongside your husband. Uh, let's see. What else we got? Uh, Jane Bullington and Charlton Pike, happy July the 4th. Please, folks, happy Independence Day. July the 4th is a date on the calendar. Tomorrow's our Independence Day. But God bless you. I have 30 ancestors who served in the Revolution. That's Bridget Finn. And I want to thank you so much for that. And always remember, April the 19th of 1775, the shot that was fired 
heard around the world their election to grain. It's all because the British were coming to disarm the American people and destroy a weapons factory. And how funny it is that today in Massachusetts, the government there is disarming the people. Sad. And that's what happens when you don't sit back and read what established you as a nation. And that's my challenge to each and every one of you. Ken Garden, I know you're in Florida. No, I'm not no. in Florida. I'm in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> but go Buckeyes. Okay, no. here we go. You know, the people down there in Florida don't too much care for Urban Meyer. So make sure he doesn't travel down to, to Florida for a vacation. Um, oh, David Kuda Jr. Wait, don't forget us. Auburn War Eagle Tigers over here. Okay, War Damn Eagle. And I know that someone's soon going to pop up and say Roll Tide oh, no. because that's just how they are. But uh, that's okay. Maybe this year might be that year that Tennessee can finally end that streak against the Alabama Crimson Tide. All right. Uh, JD, Mountains of Western North Carolina, you guys are beautiful and inspiring. We need you guys in the White House. Okay, well, 2008, again, I don't think that's right. Well, we'll see what happens. 2018. Uh, thank you, uh, Joe McGee. And thank you, Janet Burns, for your kind comments. Uh, Kim Theron, I told everyone in my office, the fourth is a date you think soldiers and retirees would know better. Keep on them, Kim, because we have to understand that it's Independence Day, not just the 4th of July. Um, Santiago San Miguel Sr., God bless the West family. Glad you're a Texan now from a Vietnam vet. Welcome home, Santiago, and thank you so much. I'm proud to be here. And as a Tennessee volunteer, we have a great history with the uh, great state of Texas. Uh, Lulu Geismar says, being a parent is not a popularity contest. I think that is a great line, and I'm going to use that against this one right back I'm here. I'm a daddy's girl, mom. Yeah, okay. Uh, Shay Shay McKay, okay. I would be that optimistic if Alan West was my father, too. I am very discouraged. Don't worry. I'm sure you have a great dad, Shay Shay. So I just love, love on. Puppy. All right. Yeah. And, and I don't know Your what, what's going on with this puppy. Your daughter is squinting. She needs glasses. Yeah. <laughs> there. Okay. Bill Lebo, we fought the British twice. Yes, we did. And we also came to their aid in World War One and World War Two. And don't forget that this is the year 2018. It was 100 years ago in this November that the war supposedly to end all wars, World War I came to an end. And uh, that is the lineage of one of the units that I served in, the 1st Infantry Division, uh, which is America's oldest uh, infantry division. Uh, so we trace the history back. And in August, I'll be up there in Wheaton, Illinois, for the 1st Infantry Division reunion. Uh, we'll be going over to Cantigny, which is the museum there. So look up those dates for the 1st Infantry uh, Division reunion. And if you can be there, love to see you there. Okay, we got two more minutes, and let's see what else we got. Uh, hello from just outside of Fort Huachuca, Jerry Barnett. Thank you so much. It was a great time uh, visiting down at Fort Huachuca last Friday while I was there at Tombstone. Incredible history, folks. You should read about Fort Huachuca. The 9th and 10th Cavalry, 24th and 25th Infantry Regiments, the Buffalo Soldiers, the uh, 92nd and 93rd uh, Black Infantry Divisions trained, all were housed there at Fort Huachuca. From, uh, I believe, 1892 to 1947, Fort Huachuca was the home to black combat troops in the United States Army. So that's a part of my history. Okay, uh, Mr. Noschekin, remember who we were before they brought us to America as slaves. Find out who you were before 70 AD, very important. I don't know who I was before 70 Someone's AD. Uh, here we go. Someone's already said roll tie. Well, you know what? We'll see you guys on that third Saturday in October. Uh, William Grant, in other words, Troy Grant, and that is my daughter's boyfriend. He's a pretty good guy, but if he continues to harass me about Alabama, you're never going to marry my daughter, Troy. All right? Just so you know. Okay, last comment. Uh, Sandra Mason got off the plane from Italy, went straight to St. Lucie. Uh, County participate in your recount 2012 should have been you. You know, you never know what God has planned for you. Sometimes he closes the door to open up an even better one. So we're, we're happy where we are. We know what happened. We know what happened there in that election in 2012. And uh, Gertrude Walker will have to look at herself in the mirror. I'm good with looking at myself in the mirror. And we know and we miss the folks down there in South Florida and representing them. So we're going to get ready to sign off. It's 730. I've taken up enough of your time. So myself, Angela, Austin, and our oldest daughter, Aubrey, we just want to say from the West family, we love America. 
and happy and blessed 242nd Independence Day to all of you who live, breathe, and enjoy the freedoms and liberties of these great United States of America. Bye now. <laughs>